Let's get since we totally record the session, the, the webinar, uh, people can always kind of uh, watch the recording at, uh, after the, the presentation here. So we recently released the Frapple uh, version 8, and it brings some uh, pretty exciting new changes on the community edition. And that's why we called this webinar to uh, walk through these changes and um, and get your feedback and input on, uh, on, on the further evolutions. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat. And at the end of the presentation here, uh, we'll have plenty of time to cover all of the questions that are coming up during the presentation here. So there's three things that I wanted to cover. First of all was like the, the license change is one particular uh, topic that has changed. Second topic is then the, the forecasting module, which is now uh, added to the open source community edition. And uh, while we're in this webinar, I also wanted to give like a, a roadmap, a kind of a picture of uh, what's coming up and what, uh, what the Frapple team is currently busy and, and working on and what we have in, in our minds. So first topic is the, the license change. So, so far, uh, Frapple has been working with the AGPL license. And now with the version 8, we're changing that to the MIT license. So on this slide, you see a bit of the, the reasoning and the history behind this. So when uh, there are typically like two, two types of uh, open source licenses. One is like a copy, what is called a copyleft family of licenses. Um, they were uh, uh, typical and dominating during the pioneer years of, of open source, when open source was still completely new. Then these licenses were very popular. And the key of this license is that they wanted to, to protect the open source nature of, of, the, of the code. Uh, so they put restrictions on using that code in uh, closed source products. And here I described the kind of the the main principle is like, what is open source must remain open source. And when Frapple was started, that was the most common type of license. And we also adopted a license uh, for, of this copyleft family, is the, which is the AGPL. And there's a second school of uh, open source licenses that is much more permissive. And I call it here, do as you wish, just don't sue me. So that's the kind of licenses, the, the spirit of the license, this is like a, a Apache, BSD, or um, MIT license. And these permissive licenses is, are much more uh, popular these days. People are these days just publishing their source code on GitHub or other platforms, and just leave it up to others to kind of do with that source code as they wish. If you find it useful, that source code, pick it up and do, do with it what you want. And this kind of way of so, uh, sharing source code is much more popular these days. And when with the license change that we're now adopting to Frapple, we're just changing, uh, we're just uh, following this industry tent uh, and, and, uh, and following the, the mainstream uh, license here. Uh, this has zero impact on enterprise and cloud uh, additions. So these customers are anyway covered by a proprietary license with uh, Frapple. So this license change does not impact them at in any way. And also the users of the community edition, the majority of them will not really be impacted by this change. The only ones that are impacted are people that are working on the community edition and that want to kind of extend this software and publish it or uh, repackage it under another name. Only those people, they will benefit from the new license. For the other ones, nothing really changes in practice. So this is the, the reasoning and the, the impact of the license change. The next topic that we want to discuss is the, the open source or the open source, uh, open source mode for the forecasting module. So, so, so far, um, uh, so we have the community edition, which is open source, and we have the cloud and enterprise editions, which are uh, paying. Uh, versions of the software. The forecasting module has so far been uh, always been in the paying versions of the software. And what is now changing is that this module is now going open source 
and it's also co uh, completely uh, free available in the, in the community edition. Um, on the right hand side, you see here a detailed list of all of the features that are uh, that this module provides, so that you have an idea of what's behind that uh, module. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail here during this webinar in all of these features. Um, if you're interested, uh, you find a lot of documentation and uh, use case videos and, uh, and, and so on on the website. Um, if you're interested in a more detailed kind of demo session of, um, of the, the functionality of the forecasting module, we could always uh, set up another webinar to follow up and, um, and, and give like an in-depth demo of the forecasting module. Um, but instead of going through the details and the functions here of this uh, forecast module, I wanted to go over the reasoning. Why are we now publishing this as open source? And what are we trying to achieve with it? And, and why, are, why are we doing it? So the time series for, uh, forecasting and uh, forecasting has uh, for many years, almost like 20, 10, 30 years, has been the kind of a uh, domain where we see this kind of uh, textbook methods uh, being active, statistical methods for extrapolating a demand uh, history into a future. So experimental smoothing, Croston methods, ARIMA methods, uh, holt Winters methods. They've all been statistical methods that have been proven and have been used for many, many years. And uh, at the bottom here, you see some uh, open source implementations of these uh, um, methods so r is a it's an open source implementation of these uh, algorithms and stats forecast is a python based uh, met, uh, package that implements these as well uh, and there are plenty more of these uh, packages around so this is the traditional way of forecasting and this has been around for like 20 30 years what we see now in, in, in the recent years is that there's a completely new generation of uh, forecasting algorithms that is uh, appearing and that is quickly overtaking uh, this domain. And just as with other domains in industry, it's, it's about machine learning and AI. These are very hot and uh, very trending topics these days. Um, and there are also like open source uh, packages that are implementing uh, AI and machine learning methods for time series forecasting. And we're talking about projects here like uh, Orbit, projects like Dart, or like uh, Profit. So there's a lot of things moving in this domain. It's uh, exciting times for the time series forecasting. There's plenty of new players on the, on the, on the block. Um, so, but time uh, forecasting is much more than what we have described here on the, uh, in, in, in this column. Um, to what we have described here are like uh, algorithms that are used by uh, uh, mathematicians or uh, Python coders to, 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 to compute, to do these calculations. But what end users really need is an end-to-end -end solution for the forecasting. So they don't need only the, the algorithms, but they also need a whole bunch of functionality that is surrounding these algorithms. And then we're talking about uh, data integrations to easily uh, bring data into the forecasting um, uh, uh, in the, in, into the forecast algorithm and also get results out. They need a user interface to easily review these numbers and uh, uh, interact with these numbers. Different people will need to make adjustments to these numbers. Um, there are some, some parts of the forecast that, that cannot be generated by any algorithm. That we're talking about like uh, new products that are being introduced. Uh, so for those kind of exceptional kind of cases, there will always be some user interaction to be involved. So forecasting tools, they include these forecasting algorithms, but they also include then much more functionality around it. So you have uh, a whole bunch of forecasting tools that are on the market to provide the more end-to-end -end solution to business users. Um, so you see some of the names here, Forecast Pro, Kinaxis, Blue Yonder, Tools Group, and many, many other applications provide this kind of end-to-end uh, -end forecasting tools for, uh, for uh, end users. And by open sourcing the, uh, the forecasting module so far, the 
Apple was also on the commercial side of this because that module was closed source. Now with this model being open source, we also have like an open source solution for end users uh, for forecasting. And that's already unique in its own. And then we, uh, when we uh, combine this with uh, the new pl planning, uh, the new forecasting algorithms that are uh, appearing, uh, we get a, a real exciting uh, combination. So with the open source Frapple framework that we have now, um, combine this plugin in the, into this framework, the, the, the kind of machine learning packages that are around uh, now, and we get a, power, a very powerful mix that we believe is uh, uh, very exciting. And that's also the reason why we exactly uh, open source this uh, this forecasting module. So by open sourcing it, we want to provide end users not only the algorithms, but an end-to-end -end, um, solution for their forecasting. Um, so this is the the reasoning behind uh, the open sourcing of the uh, of the forecasting module. Uh, one of the questions that I've anticipated is um, uh, some people of the audience here will ask us, uh, why are you also not open sourcing a certain feature X that you're interested in? Um, the answer here is very simple. It all depends on the community. So um, Frapple has an open source, uh, open core uh, business model, which means that uh, we have an open source community edition but we also have a paying version of the software where we provide some additional uh, flexibility and, and f additional features and, and support for uh, professional users. Uh, the boundary of what is in, in the community edition and the, um, and the paying versions is something that we always challenge and we're always um, asking ourselves the question or whether we, we whether we have a certain feature in the community edition or whether we want to keep it reserved for paying versions. The boundary is, is dynamic, but um, where the boundary uh, lies depends a lot on the community. If you have a lot of input from the community in the development of uh, the, the software, then we can also uh, share a lot of, of, uh, of our developments with the community. If the community uh, stays on the side, pretty much as, as it is today, and participates very low in, in, the, in, the, in the development of REPL, then uh, you should not expect us to, to, to publish more of our, of our work for free. So in, in summary, it all depends on you. The more that you are, uh, as a, and you, I mean the community as a whole, the more that you participate and collaborate and help us forward, the more that, that uh, the Frapple company can also then help you forward by publishing more in the software. And another topic that I wanted to cover here in the call today is then about um, the, the roadmap. I just wanted to give you a preview of uh, what's on our minds and what we are working on and uh, what, what you can expect in uh, the coming releases in, from Frapple. So the first thing is definitely we're interested in, in uh, integrating one of these machine learning in, uh, forecasting packages into the software. We're looking into, into input from, from the community and collaboration with the community to understand which ones uh, are, of, are of interest and uh, whether the community is willing to collaborate and work together with us on that one. Uh, another topic that we're currently uh, that is hot on our uh, roadmap is uh, the interactive planning. So in the recent change, in the recent releases, there are already more changes that are on, also on the community edition to allow more interactive changes of production orders and pr purchase orders. And also in upcoming releases, uh, that will continue. Um, another topic that is uh, currently under development is uh, planning for perishable products. So some customers have uh, uh, products that have like a limited shelf life and they require special attention during planning to, to avoid that inventory needs to be thrown away and, and, uh, and goes to waste. So you can expect some features in, in, the, in the planning solver and in the user interface to support that. 
Um, we have been working closely with, with uh, Udu and work and con continuously uh, and, uh, improving the integration with Udu. And uh, a, a lot of our customers are Udu, are using Udu as the ERP system. So we're definitely going to continue to focus on that integration and to deepen it and to make it uh, uh, robust and reliable and, and very easy to use and to deploy. Uh, another thought that we have is allowing users to interactively install add-ons. So in a lot of applications, you have like a, a marketplace or like a, a list of uh, plugins that you can activate. Right now in Frapple, we, we have the, con the, the core is there to allow this kind of uh, add-ons, but the activating an add-on is currently only possible from the backend in, in, the, in the Django settings file. And we want to allow users also to do this interactively from a user interface. Uh, maintainability and upgradability. We want to also make it e uh, uh, keep it as easy and simple as possible for easier for users to install the software and to upgrade to new releases and avoid is um, issues during upgrades. So that's also an area that we're continuously uh, monitoring and continuously looking for improvements. And just as in the past, uh, we'll continue to have a strong focus on the usability of the software, making the screens as easy to use and as understandable uh, for end users as possible. These are just the hot topics that we have on, on our minds. Um, all of this list, of course, is, um, is, um, is uh, a lot of our development is also driven by uh, requirements from uh, implementation projects that are sponsoring certain uh, enhancements. And that's going to continue. So this is very quickly and very. Uh, this is what I wanted to cover uh, in the call today. Um, now I'm opening it for any questions and answers that you may have, and we can dive deeper in the the concerns or the questions or uh, the the topics that you want to bring up here. Do we have any questions? No, we don't have questions currently. So it means all that you said is very clear. Uh, okay, so if okay. we have no questions, then we'll we'll wrap up this. Yeah. So if there's no questions, then we can wrap up here. Um, if you have any further remarks or any questions or on and so on, here you find our email address that you can easily reach us. And you're also free to open a, a, a public discussion on our GitHub uh, repository. OK, thank you, Johan. Thank you for all the attendees. Have a nice day. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.